Good day, Olivarians! Let's proceed to our new lesson. I am Sir Marx Verdell, your topic instructor in biomechanics of human movement. This lesson aims to Number 1. Identify the planes of motion, directional terms, and anatomical terms of movement. Number 2. Classify the directional terms of the different parts of human body. Number 3. Perform the anatomical terms of movements. Number 4. Explain the importance of biomechanic terms through interview. Do not forget to list down all your questions and clarifications so that you can ask and consult your physical education instructor. So, let's begin! So before we proceed to our topic for today, let's have a short stretching muna. So gently elevate your shoulders and retract your scapula and make an arm circumduction. Nasusundan ba? If none of that made sense, then keep watching this video as we learn movement terms and how to describe the structure's position of our body. So, let's talk about biomechanics of human movement. Ano nga ba si biomechanics? Biomechanics is the science of movement of a living body including how muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments work together to produce movement. Basically, study of the movement of living things using the science of mechanics. Ibig sabihin, kasama na rito ang ating katawan. Pag-aaralan kung paano gumagalaw ang ating muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments. So, our body is three-dimensional. And imagine that we are divided and sliced into halves. We cannot move in one proportion. Kasi kung one proportion lang, hindi natin magagalaw yung kamay natin palayo sa atin, sa harap, o sa likod. Kaya may tinatawag tayong planes of motion. So, there are three planes of motion, which are sagittal plane, frontal plane, and transverse plane. So, pag-usapan natin si sagittal plane. The movements in this plane are the up and down movements such as flexion and extension. It passes through our body from front to back, dividing into left and right. So, sagittal plane is a vertical plane that cuts our body into left and right halves. So, as you can see sa demonstration, her body is moving front to back, flexing and extending the hip and knee joint. Next is frontal plane. It divides our body into front and back. The movements in this plane are called abduction and adduction, which is sideways movements. So, si frontal plane is a rin siyang vertical plane that passes through our body dividing into posterior and anterior. Pag sinabi nating posterior and anterior, ito yung harap at likod ng ating katawan. So, lahat ng lateral or side movements that is towards or away the midline is considered as frontal plane. Kung mapapansin sa demonstration, she is doing a sideways exercise which is jumping jacks. So lastly, transverse plane. This plane divides our body into top and bottom. Movements in this plane are rotational such as external and internal rotation supination and pronation. So, among the three planes of motion, si transverse plane lang ang horizontal plane that divides the body parts into top and bottom halves. So, movements under transverse planes are the rotations of our joints. So, imagine, ikaw yung bata na nasa larawan and you are sad because you have huge pimple on your face. But where exactly on your face? Dito ba? 
dito o dito. On your face is non-specific, but if you are going to use directional terminologies, we can identify the location of the pimple or the other parts of the body. For example, the pimple is 2 cm superior to nose, and that will lead us to directional terms. Directional term describe the structure's position relative to other structures or locations of the body. We have lateral and medial, superior and inferior, proximal and distal, and anterior posterior. Medial, toward the midline of the body. Pag sinabi nating medial, it is any point closer to midline. Ano nga ba si midline? Midline is an imaginary line that cuts the body in half vertically. So, ibig sabihin, si midline ay nasa gitna ng ating katawan. Lateral. Away from the midline of the body. Ibig sabihin, malayo siya sa ating katawan o malayo siya sa ating midline. Example, the middle toe is located at the medial side of the foot. Why? Because middle toe is on the midline. Example for lateral, the little toe is located at the lateral side of the foot. Bakit? Because little toe is further away to midline. We can also say that middle toe is medial to little toe and little toe is lateral to middle toe. Next is superior, toward the head end of the body. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng kay taas sa ating ulo. Next, inferior, away from the head o lahat ng paibaba or towards the feet. For example, the hand is part of the superior extremity. Why? Because we can extend our hands above our head. Next, the foot is part of the inferior extremity. Bakit? Kasi it is below or away from our head. So we have proximal and distal. Proximal is part of the body that is closer to the center of the body. While distal is away from or farthest from trunk or the point or origin of a part. So all red arrows indicates proximal. And all yellow arrows indicates distal. Tandaan na ginagamit lang natin ang mga directional terms na ito if we are going to describe two joints in one limb. It's either the arm or the leg. For example, the knee is proximal to the ankle. Why? Because knee is closer to where the leg inserts to the body. Mas malapit ang tuhod. Next, the hand is located at the distal end of the forearm. Why? Because hand is further. Last two directional terms are anterior and posterior. So, anterior is toward the front of the body, while posterior is toward the back of the body. So, gagamitin lang natin si anterior if we are describing parts of our body that is on the front surface. Si posterior naman is parts of our body na nasa back surface. For example, navel o pusod is on the anterior surface of the body, while heel is on the posterior surface of our body. Other examples? The shoulder blades are located on the posterior side of the body and the kneecap is located on the anterior side of the leg. So we all know that muscles contract to produce movements and these terminologies will help us to describe the actions. We have anatomical terms of movements. Anatomical terms of movements is used in describing the actions of muscles on the skeleton. At meron tayong 14 terms of movement. So let's start with abduction and adduction. 
abduction is moving a body part away from its resting anatomical position in the coronal plane, while adduction is returning it to its normal resting position. So, pag sinabi nating abduction, moving away from the midline. Ano nga ba ulit si midline? Imaginary line sa gitna ng ating katawan. And adduction, moving towards the midline of the body. Ibig sabihin, ibabalik lang natin siya sa ating resting position. And abduction and adduction are lateral movements. So, ginagawa natin si abduction and adduction usually sa hips and shoulders. Pero, alam nyo ba na possible din siya sa fingers? Pero, it doesn't mean going away from the body's midline. Pero, sa midline siya ng ating kamay. So, finger abduction is spreading them away or moving them apart. And, adduction or finger adduction is closing them or adding them together. So, try to lift your hands and try finger abduction. Now, closing them or adding them together. And that's finger adduction. So, next is flexion and extension or bending and straightening. Flexion refers to decreasing a joint angle while extension refers to increasing the joint angle back to resting anatomical position. Tatandaan na si flexion, decreasing. Si extension, increasing. Si flexion, bending. Si extension, straightening. At tatandaan na flexion and flexing are two different things. Pag sinabi natin flex, we are adding tension or contracting our muscle. So, try nyo i-flex yung biceps nyo. Put some tension on it. Okay, you are doing elbow flexion while flexing your biceps. Okay? So, try nyo namang lagyan ng tension yung legs nyo. You are contracting your quadriceps while extending your knees. So next is rotation and circumduction. Rotation refers to movements made about the longitudinal axis and in transverse. While circumduction is a circular motion in which limb traces out the shape of a cone. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng rotation. Isang internal rotation and external rotation. Malalaman lang natin na internal rotation, pag yung joint natin ay papunta ng midline at pag external naman ay palayo ng midline. Pagdating sa circumduction, Combination siya ng flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction. At tatandaan na ang circumduction ay circular movement. So next is elevation and depression. Elevation refers to lifting and depression refers to lowering. Madali lang siyang tandaan. Pag elevation, paangat. Pag depression, pababa. So, we can do elevation and depression in our jaws. Try to do it. And we can also do elevation and depression in our scapula. Next is pronation and supination. Sobrang dali lang ng terminologies na ito. Pronation refers to the palm of the hand facing the ground. And supination refers to the palm of the hand facing upward. Tatandaan na si pronation, palm facing down. Supination, palm facing up. So last four terminologies are about the movements of our ankle. We have plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. 
Plantar flexion refers to pointing the foot away from the tibia and down into the ground, while dorsiflexion brings the back of the foot back toward the tibia. So, pag sinabi nating plantar flexion, extension siya ng ating ankle that points our foot inferiorly o pababa. Pag sinabi naman nating dorsiflexion, pointing our feet superiorly or pataas. And ang ankle natin ay nagagalaw din natin ng hindi lang plantar at dorsi, but we also have inversion and eversion. Inversion refers to bringing the soles of the feet in, while eversion refers to bringing the soles of the feet out. If we are doing inversion, tandaan na hindi tayo makakatayo o pwede tayong matumba. Pag eversion naman, kayang-kaya nating tumayo. Understanding biomechanics and applying it is the foundation of good technique in all sports. So by studying how human body naturally wants to move, we can remove stress and pressure on the bones, muscles, and ligaments. I hope you learned something today. If you have some questions and clarifications, don't hesitate to ask your physical education instructor. Thank you.